Hey, what's up team? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to the channel Resources for the Modern Creative, where we help you become a better Logic user. Today we are talking about the weirdest thing about Logic Pro Part 3. This is a part of an extensive series. If you haven't checked out those videos, it's a bit of a tongue in cheek way of looking at Logic Pro. So let's get started. If you haven't subscribed already, you know what time it is. All right, so let's look at this very interesting feature. And before I start talking about this, I just wanna tell you how I came to this conclusion, how I started thinking about this. When we go into the Apple Loop Browser, we can clearly see that when sifting through pattern loops inside of the browser, when I look at the signature tab, there is nothing available for anything other than 4-4 timing. And so if you're somebody that likes to experiment with time, this format is a bit contradictory in nature. Let me explain myself further. If I go ahead and play a traditional 4-4 four, four time signature groove, check it out, this is what it sounds like. All right, so that's simple enough. For every single quarter note, we have a beat in place. So it's one, two, three, four. But what if you wanted to use a different time signature? That can be a little strange for a couple of reasons. If you just drag and drop this over, you can see that it's simply not in line with the bars within the three, four time signature system. So although it may play correctly, it's not necessarily going to be easy to edit per se. So check this out. Right, so that can be a conundrum. It could be very confusing because you're trying to get this to fit. One simple fix for that is just to simply re-lengthen this to make sure that everything is positioned right where it needs to be. So now this is in three, four time signature and it will make musical sense. Check it out. Three. Three. Another weird feature in Logic is the fact that if I drag in a loop from the Apple browser and I go into the region inspector, we can see clearly that we have reverse functionality, which can also be triggered by hitting the key command control shift R, but we also have a speed function. So if I wanted to perhaps make something play at double speed, or maybe you just wanted half speed, you can control that all from the region inspector, right? But if you use a third party sample, like let's say I go into the all files browser here, I go into my bookmarks and I've got a folder basically designated for just everything you can possibly think of. And I wanted to use a symbol role. And so we get the reverse function, but we don't get the speed function. How does this happen? Why does this happen? Well, Apple loops have specific metadata embedded, and this is why you get the reverse and speed functionality, which by the way, you will notice that these features will go away as soon as you start to use flex time. This goes for both Apple loops, proprietary royalty free samples and, and loops, but also for third parties as well. So as soon as I start to go into the world of flex editing, then those features are going to be gone. So bear in mind, Apple loops, they give you reverse speed functionality, third party loops or anything you recording yourself will only give you reverse functionality, but you will not be able to get the speed functionality in place. And I guess a quick hack, if you're ever inside of flex time and you do need to access reverse and speed, all you simply have to do is burn this into audio, so bounce region, and then you can access the reverse function there once again. And for those of you looking to utilize the speed function, really is not that challenging. All you have to do is hover the mouse on the bottom right or left region of any track, uh, click hold, then hold option and drag out, and that should be able to give you the speed function that you're looking for as well. Now, something that's come up recently, I've been downloading a bunch of great plugins and working with a lot of new plugins, and I just picked up 
Yum Audio's Spread plugin. If you haven't heard of it, it is absolutely insane. One of the best plugins that I've seen in a long time and will definitely replace Ozone Imager 9, which I use all the time, but this is the latest and the greatest. Now, this is great and all, but one thing that happened was when I downloaded this AU component, which Logic Pro uses, I kept, basically kept overriding DJ Swivel's plugin that's also called Spread. So these are two plugins that have the same name, and I believe there are other plugins that also have the same name. And so one of the weirdest things about Logic is the fact that if you download a plugin that has the same name, they are going to overwrite each other and you will not be able to find them within the plugin manager. So one fix for that is to simply go into the AU component folder and to change the name of one of them. So you can see this one's called Spread by Yum Audio and this one's called Spread and I literally typed in the words DJ and that was enough to be able to differentiate it within the system so that I could use both of these plugins within my sessions. All right, cool. And for my last trick here, I want to be absolutely clear that there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I know everybody makes mistakes, but we have to correct each other with grace. And I saw one of the biggest YouTube channels today doing something that was just not right. And so I want to make sure that you guys don't make that mistake. If you're ever interested in using binaural panning, one thing that needs to be mentioned, the responsible thing, is to let you know that this is only good if you're using headphones. So for headphone playback, this is a fantastic feature. Uh, this is actually on page 588 of the Logic Pro user guide. It says here that the signal that results from using binaural pan is best suited for headphone playback. However, processing this signal using the binaural post-processing plugin will allow this to be used effectively through loudspeakers. So if you're gonna use binaural panning, which again, another byproduct is phase and it gets really messy. So just, you know, take your time with this stuff. You're gonna to have to use the binaural post-processing plugin. You wanna go into logic, go into imaging, and there is binaural post-processing. And now when you render this, it's going to effectively play back in a stereo system, left and right speaker. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the series. Thank you so much for watching. Most of you guys are not subscribed for whatever reason, so go ahead and sign up so we can keep this communication going. Thank you for the opportunity to hang out with you and to serve at the highest level. Let's keep at it. Let's make this a great day, a great month, a great year, and I'll catch you on the next one. Stay up. Get high, sing a lullaby